Last week, we saw the triumphant move of the Golden Empire, our recuperating colony of yellow crazy ants, into their new ant farm home. But AC family will be moving the Golden Empire for now to another nearby location of the Antiverse, our ant room, not too far away. Because today, you're about to see something not I, nor to the best of my knowledge, even scientists have ever observed ants do before. And I made this intriguing discovery while creating a new home for one of the most intriguing and odd ant colonies we have living in the Antiverse. The Blood Legion. Our dark colony of Dracula ants who suck the blood of their own young for sustenance. AC family, prepare to witness something even more shocking than their blood-sucking feeding behaviors as we watch our Dracula ants move into a new estate and revealing something they've started doing to their faces. Are they preparing to wage war against me? I sure hope not. But perhaps you might be able to guess why our Dracula ants have begun to wear what seems to be war paint. So let's get started. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. An empty tank gets slid snugly between the island of Vampiron, our new vampire crab island, and the Arachno Sanctorium, shrine to our beloved tarantula goddess of the Antiverse. And in this tank, of course, Today we will be moving another fang-themed kingdom, the Blood Legion, our queenless ant colony of Dracula ants. If you're new to the channel and to the Blood Legion, these Dracula ants, belonging to the genus Stigmatoma, are quite odd, but an interesting species of ant. First, they get their name from the fact that they drink the blood of their young, yes, they fatten up their larvae by bringing them to food, as you can see here. Those maggot-like larvae are having a feast on those superworm carcasses. And the reason they are allowing the young to feed first on the fresh superworm meat is because the workers, their older sisters, are fattening them up and then taking them away once they've had their fill. And you know what happens next, right? Yup. Once the larvae are brought back into the nest, the adults pierce the larvae's skin and drink the hemolymph, the technical term for ant blood. Don't worry though, as the cuts heal like magic. And this is how the species has survived for millions of years. Didn't I tell you they're an odd ant? And as mentioned earlier, they're about to get even odder in a little bit. But they're not all unconventional as they're also highly adaptable, as we found that they will also eat normally, feeding from our freshly killed insects like normal ants. This made caring for them and housing them super easy over the past 10 months that they've been under our care. And so, here we are 10 months later, AC family, and it is finally time to move the Blood Legion into a new home and give them the large estate they deserve this is going to be awesome. All right, AC family, prepare yourselves for we are going to do what creator of worlds do best. Create the new and lush ant kingdom of our Dracula ants. So here was my plan. Are you ready? Now, one of the greatest things about Dracula ants is they're not the best escape artists. In fact, they can't even climb smooth glass very well. This is a great thing, because it means we can do so much more with their living space. Kind of like the Jawbreaker's old home. Remember the Plateaus of Gaia? It was a multi-level series of soil mountains, held in place by wood and moss, that proved to be an excellent home for the Jawbreakers, i.e. our trap jaw ants, which also don't climb glass. It was this inability to glass climb that allowed us to build decor so close to the top of the terrarium without a need for a barrier and create an awesomely varied topography that looked super attractive and also created the perfect habitat for the ants to proceed to number in the hundreds of thousands 
before recently moving to their larger terrarium. Well, AC family, I had similar plans for the Blood Legion. I wanted to create a multi-level castle work of wood, soil, moss, and stone, fit for a growing colony of Draculas. I placed in a couple pieces of driftwood. I rearranged the driftwood until it created the desired skeleton I wanted. These wooden pieces would be the walls holding back the soil columns behind. You'll see what I mean soon. Next, I placed clumps of sphagnum moss into spaces between the wood. Sphagnum moss is one of my ultimate favorite building materials for the terrarium kingdoms of our beloved Antiverse inhabitants. It's highly water absorbent, easy to work with, and makes any space look naturalistic. Now to add in another favorite building component, some cocoa peat medium. This highly absorbent medium is generally mold resistant, nicely fills in the ground spaces, and is awesome for ants to tunnel in. I then added soil behind the wood and rocks here and there to help keep the shape and integrity of the lands. And after three hours of work, this is what the new future Dracula ant world looked like. AC family, behold, the future territories of the Blood Legion. Doesn't it look so cool? Let me show you around. This multi-level terrarium construct has one of the most incredible and drastic landscapes I've ever done in a terrarium. It of course has a lower layer, the pit, where I plan on placing the majority of the ants' food. It's designed to mimic a wet tropical forest floor, perfectly matching Dracula ant country of the wild. And then of course, it's got a cool upper region, the highlands, which is highest at the left and gradually slopes downward toward the right of the terrarium. I really love the collection of plant life in these lands. They give the territories a certain rainforest floor feel, which I'm certain the Blood Legion will really love. Arrow plants, vein plants, even a beautiful creeping plant lived epiphytically in that wooden nook made for an attractive vegetation profile. Now guys, take a look at how drastic the land is. See that slope? All of that there is soil behind the wood. This armchair design, highest at the back, lower on the sides, and lowest at the front, makes for a gorgeous view, no matter what angle you're looking from. See? Isn't that so pretty to look at? Now what's even cooler is I've purposely designed the lands to flow nicely in succession when looking at the three terrariums together. You've got a tropical pond, a wet forest floor, and a drier rockscape. It's like they're all connected. I've laid down some moss at the bottom of the pit area to give the forest floor a wetter habitat look. I hope it likes the habitat and continues to grow. I also feel the Dracula ants will appreciate all these shaded areas. There's plenty of places to set up nest tunnels in these lands. My guess is they'll really love this upper region. What do you guys think? One final thing to point out is that the decor also shoots out of the tank, taking full advantage of the fact that the ants don't really climb stuff. So what do you guys say? What should we call these lands which our Dracula ants, the Blood Legion, will be inheriting in just a moment? Leave your name suggestions for this new terrarium home in the comments, and I will choose my top five favorites for us to vote on in a future video. All right? And now the time has come, guys, to move the Blood Legion in. And what you will see when they do will shock you. So keep on watching. Behold the Blood Towers, in which the Blood Legion has been living for 10 months. But something is different. All the Dracula ants of the colony have congregated in one of the four ant towers. Every worker, egg, larva, pupa, and gamergate are gathered here. The reason for this is because I've dried out this ant tower, the one behind it, the whole outworld, and this ant tower here by discontinuing watering regimen. This change in moisture distribution in the lands has induced the colony to move into this one moist ant tower here. Look at how many are in there now. Isn't it crazy? These 
these Dracula ants are totally ready and are at the perfect size now to move into the new home we made for them. With the entire colony isolated in this one ant tower, I went in and disconnected the tower from the whole network and carefully carried the ants to the new world we created for them. I'm always so nervous introducing ants into a new world because I never know how they'll react. I removed the cover of the ant tower. Are you ready, AC family? One, two, three. In went a bunch of the ants onto the forest floor of the terrarium. I did my best to move the soil around so that any ants or brood trapped beneath could wriggle free, though they were still fully proficient below the soil either way. I also dumped some of the colony in this upper region. So many ants, wow! I then dumped the rest of the ants onto this side of the highlands. There you go, girls. Now, AC family, let's watch. The Dracula ants immediately began exploring the territories. At ground level, they were excited to check out the interesting and new lands. They checked out the moss beds and wandered into the shadows. Some ants explored the sphagnum moss by the terrarium wings. Many ants began forming trails along the back rocks at the foot of the soil walls. But AC family, what I saw next was something I'd never before seen and couldn't figure out. Up here, in the highlands, the ants were restless and clearly excited exploring this upper shelf which spanned the entire back end of the nest. I knew it wouldn't be long before the ants would start to burrow here. I noticed this ant carrying a larva all around. It was probably looking for a place to keep the larva while the rest of the colony sought out a hole in the ground to expand downward into. But guys, do you see anything peculiar? To my surprise, some of the workers had mud-colored heads. Look! Now I know it could possibly just be the ants brushing by tight tunnels in the ant tower, but really? All those workers? with nearly the same mud design shape on their heads? What in face paint is going on here? I mean, seriously, look at that. It was as if the ants were deliberately rubbing mud onto their heads, like war paint. How peculiar, and for what purpose, I wonder? I have never once come across any study of Dracula ants, or any ants for that matter, applying face paint like this. And to the best of my knowledge, this is undocumented stuff. AC family, mark it down. We saw it first. And what was interesting to note was that not all the ants had this face paint. Some of the ants were paintless, while others sported the face paint look. It was all just really cool to see. OMG, could you imagine if this war paint was some kind of ranking system among the ants? I mean, they are queenless, so they run on a gamma gate system where only dominant workers are allowed to lay the colony's eggs. Their whole social structure is based on a Dracula ant hierarchy. I could see evidence of this hierarchy when dominant workers went as far as grabbing younger, less dominant workers by the waist, picking them up and physically carrying them to where the dominant worker wanted the less dominant worker to go. What are your theories, guys, on this whole ant face paint thing? Whatever the case, the war paint made the ants easier to make out in the terrarium. I was happy to see that a lot of the ants had found suitable nesting holes to retreat into and started moving in the brood. Larvae, cocoons, and eggs were all brought down into the hole. Even at ground level, it seems the ants had found suitable nesting places for brood and were even starting to dig. I decided to let these very strange and odd ants move into the lands in peace. Good night, Blood Legion, and I'll see you in the morning. The next day, the Dracula ants had all moved into the soils and were seen perusing the lands for food. So, as is AC tradition, I gave them a housewarming gift, a chopped up cockroach, which a couple of them found and spread the word to other colony members 
who eventually came rushing out of their new nests to have a taste. Overall, watching the ants feasting on their cockroach made me smile inside, knowing that this colony was quite possibly on the same promising road as the Jawbreakers, hopefully seeing hundreds of thousands of Dracula ants in their colony in the near future. Though this face painting thing is still quite the mystery to me, it reminded me that there is still so much that is not studied about ants. During a chat with Dr. Corey Moreau, myrmecologist from Ant Lab in Chicago, Illinois, she mentioned that the world needs more myrmecologists and people looking at ants. Because we've just barely scraped the surface, there is literally so much we still don't know about ants let alone about each of the over 16,000 species of ants we've documented and the rest we don't even know about yet and have yet to discover. On this channel alone, there have been several times we've observed some pretty amazing, bizarre, and undocumented stuff. Stuff that have even intrigued and stumped biologists. I wonder if you AC family have noticed something similar in any of the ants you may be keeping. Or perhaps know more about this face painting behavior in these Dracula ants. Hey, perhaps we'll never know what the ants use that mud face paint for. And I'm okay with it being a mystery as well. Let's wish the Blood Legion a long and prosperous life ahead. We did good today, AC family. And it seems all was well in the Antiverse today. At least that is what I thought. For when I looked into the Hacienda del Dorado that day, I was not prepared to see what I saw. Oh no! I can't believe this! They're back! This is not good. Oh no, AC family! In case you don't know what these ants are, you need to watch our Pharaoh Ant series from a couple years ago. They are literal ant murderers and are truly up to no good infiltrating our Antiverse again. I'm currently doing all I can to keep them away and ward them off, but I will surely keep you updated on their invasion. So guys, smash that subscribe button and bell icon now so you don't miss out on all the real life drama of the inhabitants of the ant room. And don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now it would really help a lot. Speaking of ants, it's officially nuptial flight season in the Northern Hemisphere, and a lot of you are catching queen ants now. And in case you didn't know, we've got all the top of the line ant keeping gear for you ant keepers at all levels, from beginner to advanced, as well as a ton of new and exciting products for the ant keeping community, not available anywhere else. So head on over to antscanada.com and browse our shop. We ship worldwide, and offer full email support if you need us. We also have ant colonies with a queen available in most regions. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what did we use to move the golden empire into the new hybrid nest? There were several correct answers, but congratulations to Zach Vignol, who correctly answered, you used heat to move the golden empire in. Congratulations, Zach. You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what was mentioned in this video that both Dracula ants and Trapjaw ants can't do? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.